I have always thought that among all virtues, piety, the most gentle pleasure of mortals, is the most typical one for me. It forms the happiness of the authority and motivates to struggle zealously for it. I decided to present this place in order to build typical thrones for all of the deities, not only to erect monuments to my forefathers, but also for the pious people so that they have this place as a witness of my piety in front of their eyes. That is why I have raised these sculptures with divine effigies. When according to the Treaty of Artashat between Rome and Armenia, Komagene was recognized as an independent kingdom, people started to call Antiochus a great king. Antiochus, the first Theos of Komagene, was from Yerbanduni dynasty. He was half Armenian and half Greek. Antiochus built many fascinating buildings, including one of the world's most enigmatic monuments, the sanctuary, the tomb complex of Mount Nemrut in Komagene. Nemrut was the highest mountain there. What does the tomb complex mean architecturally? It is an artificially built cone. The peak is moving upward with the possible size of cone, and the pathway where subgroups of monuments are fixed is created on a circular basis. According to ancient theological perceptions, the order of the universe was safeguarded due to the cosmic mountain Ararat after Genesis. The people were assured that the bones of their ancestors canonized their motherland. For this reason, all of the mausoleums were pyramid-like or cone-like, which was the peculiar symbol of the cosmic mountain. Therefore, the tomb complex was built on the highest peak of the kingdom, which was 2,100 meters high. In addition, it was built with tiny stones brought from other places and was 50 meters high. The sanctuary of Nemrut is a crucial source for the study of Armenian pre-Christian belief. A variety of figures and sculptures were created here, featuring gods, the king and his predecessors, eagles and lions. There were five statues in the central part of the tomb complex, where in the very center was the statue of Aramast. It was nine meters high. According to Armenian mythology, Aramast was the creator of earth and heaven. He was the father of all gods and goddesses, a person who inspired courage to people. The statue of Anahid was on the right side of Aramast. Anahid was considered the goddess of war, fertility and healing, and the protector of the country and its capital. She was called Golden Mother. The statue of Mir Apollon Helios, the god of sun and justice, was on the left. These three were the principal deities. The statue of Artagnes Heracles Bahagan, the god of courage, was near them. The worship of Artagnes Bahagan was merged to that of Mihar, and thus Bahagan became a member of the supreme trio leading the Pantheon. The statue of Antiochus, the king, was also there. The king presented himself as a terrestrial incarnation of Mir. Mir was a god creator. According to the myth, Mir passed seven stages of endowment, the most significant and decisive of which was the last one, the assassination of a bull symbolizing a chaos. Killing the bull, Mir created the world from its body parts and established the divine law on the earth. According to ancient beliefs, 
sword, which meant year, was wearing out after every rotation. Consequently, it needed to be refitted. For this reason, a special rite was held, the main action of which was called Toromachia, meaning the murdering of the bull. During this rite, the king repeated the heroic action of Mihir. It symbolized the new creation and restoration of the universe order. Nemrut Antiochus I built the sanctuary in the first century before Christ. The centuries are gone and many things have been changed. Antiochus was forgotten during the years and was remembered again after two millenniums. Nevertheless, the mausoleum was not collapsed, and now many scientists consider this place the eighth wonder of the